What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to College Football Talk with Peter Bertinet. In today's episode, I'm recapping the Week 13 action. I'll have another video coming out shortly, previewing the final week of the regular season in Week 14. But before I get into it, if you're going to enjoy this video, please feel free to leave a like, consider subscribing to the channel, and turn on those post notifications so you're always up to date whenever I upload. Starting things out, going over the top five showdown in Columbus. Ohio State dominated on special teams against Indiana in a 38-15 to win. Um, they, they also dominated defensively. I guess I'll go over that first. They only allowed 148 yards of total offense. They also racked up five sacks. Cody Simon, who I have pictured in the background here making a tackle for loss, had two and a half sacks. Um, it was a big game for the Buckeyes defense. They really limited Indiana all day. Um, Hoosiers got kind of a late touchdown to, to get up to 15, but they had been held to single digits for a good part of the game. So Buckeyes defense really shut things down. But where the big play was made was Caleb Downs returning a punt for a touchdown. It's the first time that's happened for the Buckeyes in almost exactly a decade. I think it was like November 23rd by Jalen Marshall in 2014, also against Indiana. And this time it's Caleb Downs, the do-it-all for Ohio State, who typically shines on defense but makes a big play on special teams as well. That was kind of a shifting point. It was early in the second half. It was just a 14-7 ball game, and that really turned the tide in Ohio State's favor. So that was a huge play there. Um, you know, just kind of a couple of other thoughts. Travion Henderson, unselfish at the end of the game. Of course, it didn't matter. Um, the Buckeyes ended up punching it in. I thought that was a little unsportsmanlike going for it there, but um, when you're at the one yard line, I can understand wanting to punch it in. But I would say the the score in that game pretty accurately reflect, reflected that. I think getting into 31-15 was a little closer than that game felt. So 38-15 is probably a pretty fair final score. Henderson had a good game, nine rushes, 68 yards, and a touchdown. Um, throughout, going back to the defense, they unsettled Curtis Rourke throughout the afternoon, really struggled. The Indiana quarterback, who's been shining for the Hoosiers this year, really was was kind of off balance the whole way. Will Howard had a clean game. I think it was something like 15 for 17 in the first half and then and, and completed a pretty good game. 22 for 26, 201 yards, two touchdowns, one interception, and, of course, the QB sneak for a rushing touchdown as well. Um, so the, the he, he played well in this one. The one interception, too, was one that went off a Buckeye receiver's hands. However, that the ball was kind of thrown into double or triple coverage, so definitely understandable why it was picked there. For Indiana, the question I wrote down, because I, I write down these notes as I'm watching these games, I wrote, you know, our IU's college football playoff hopes dashed. Um, it's a rough loss. They might. I wrote they might drop past some SEC teams. We'll talk about here in a minute why now that might not be the case because of some losses that happened elsewhere in college football. And getting right into that, actually, here another one of the noon game noon, noon games in the noon window. Um, Jackson Dart threw a couple of late interceptions. One was in the triple coverage in the end zone that sealed Florida's upset win over Ole Miss. It's another ranked win for the Gators after beating LSU last week. Um, it was a bad decision that likely pushes the Rebels outside of the college football playoff race. Now, because of the other teams that lost in the SEC as well, maybe it won't hurt as much, but it certainly opens the door for some of those two lost teams, especially out of the Big 12. Um, Gators force a couple of turnovers. Montreal Johnson had a good game, rushing for over 100 yards and a touchdown. DJ Lagway played well again, 180 passing yards, two touchdowns. Um, five of those passes and 87 of those yards were to Elijah Badger, who also brought in a touchdown. Um, the Gators defense late also got a sack after Florida had punted the ball back to Ole Miss. And then a second interception is really what sealed the deal. Um, I would, and again, notes that are written down after these games are finished is I wrote down the rebels are unlikely to make the college football playoff unless Two other SEC teams lose their third game, and that is exactly what happened later on Saturday. Absolute SEC chaos. Alabama got completely shut down by Oklahoma and really a poor showing, a 24-3 loss. Sooners defense is really good under Brent Venables. Their offense needs to catch up, but it did, did more than enough in this win, so that could be something, in spite of having a 6-5 and five record, could be the type of win that can motivate this team and, and push them going into the offseason. Texas A&M, as well, was lost in a 
uh, quadruple overtime, four overtime thriller. Um, some of the magic returns to Jordan Hare Stadium. I mean, they almost pulled the upset about uh, against Alabama last year. But it seems like it's kind of been almost for the Tigers here recently. But they finally get back with that big win. I mean, that's what over the years, to me at least, I think Jordan Hare has become known for. is It's, it's a tough place to go in and win. It has some magical plays, looking especially at the 2013 season. So some of that returned. Who are, however, on this point, the biggest beneficiaries? I think Indiana probably first and foremost, along with Notre Dame. Both of those two teams have one loss. It is really, I would say, impossible to even think it's feasible to put a three-loss SEC team ahead of a one-loss Indiana or Notre Dame. So both of those teams are huge beneficiaries. You know, when you get in that resume talk, two losses versus one makes a big difference. So we'll have to see Tuesday when the playoff rankings come out where these teams are, but those are two two big beneficiaries, a couple of others, SMU, Boise State, and, and I think even Clemson as well. Clemson, I think we could see them climb back into the top 15 this week after these losses, and obviously SMU and Boise State are already in that territory. Um, a, a, another question to ask is who is the best three-loss SEC contender? Based on how the rankings were, it was probably Alabama, but looking at it now, out of these three teams I've talked about, I would have to say it's probably Texas A&M, although Ole Miss is kind of right there with them. I think Alabama has proven they're, they're lacking consistency this year. You know, they win good games, and then they totally just lay an egg, and they, they score three points against Oklahoma. Yeah, it's a good defense, but you got to play better than that. I think at least Ole Miss, you know, losing just by a touchdown against a good Florida defense, um, Texas A&M going the distance against Auburn, you know, th those are two games that I think are higher quality losses, but it's going to be tough to justify putting those teams in there. And another thing is, out of the Big 12, let's talk about that Arizona State-BYU game. What an incredible out of this world ending where the fans were early onto the field Arizona State held off a BYU rally um, they were up I think 21 to nothing at one point yeah BYU rallied from that um, another thing okay going over this game a little bit Arizona State recovered an onside kick with a 14 nothing lead with four and a half minutes left in the first half and I think then they were able to go down and get it up to 21 nothing so again, BYU started kind of chipping away, and they were looking like a better team than they've been these last couple weeks where they eke by Utah and then get beat by Kansas. Um, although Kansas is playing really good football right now, to be fair to them. So they storm back, and then the Arizona State fans, after Arizona State has the ball, fourth, fourth, um, fourth down, I don't remember the yardage, and they throw it out of bounds with what looked like time expiring however i i thought from seeing it live that there was going to be a second on the clock anyways and then that was confirmed you know fans had already stormed the field and there was a lot too it wasn't like a slow you know flow onto the field they were they were there they were there quickly so they had to get them all off the field that took i think something like almost 15 minutes i think um however one second was then added and byu's hail mary fell short so also, though, before I talk about what this means for the Big 12, like I said already, Kansas continues their ways of upsetting teams. I think it might be their third straight ranked win for the Jayhawks. So they had a rough start to the season. They they really got out of the gate slow, but they're starting to turn things around, and I believe they're playing for bowl eligibility this next week. So they beat Colorado. That race is totally thrown up into the air. I think there's four teams right now that are tied at 6-2 and two in the conference. And then there's another five, I think, that are 5-3. and three. Based on tiebreakers, there are nine different teams from the Big 12 that could get in uh, to the conference championship game. And also, because of where teams were ranked... I think it's highly unlikely that we even get a Big 12 team in the top 15. I could see Arizona State maybe after this win sliding in there, maybe Iowa State making their way back up there. But what that means to me is we're going to get a major bid stealer. Like we talk about with the NCAA tournament in, in basketball, there's going to be a bid stealer out of the Big 12. With no teams likely ranked higher than 15, you're going to have you know a team that's ranked 12th likely get left out of the playoff, 12th in the overall rankings because of the how the college football playoff works with the five highest ranked conference champions. So Big 12 is going to steal a bid. That can affect what I talked about already with those three loss SEC teams.
One other thing to talk about, looking at the ACC quickly, mentioned SMU already and Clemson actually too. They sealed an ACC championship game berth in their first season in the conference. They won comfortably at Virginia. I think it was 33-7. to uh, Virginia might have gotten a late touchdown. I know that was a score late in that one. And then Miami, because of their tiebreaker against Clemson, because Miami beat Louisville, Clemson lost to them, Miami, with a win this coming Saturday, would get into the ACC championship game. But it's a tough one. It's at Syracuse. Syracuse is playing really well. They've got Kyle McCord there. A good overall team. They're sitting at eight and three, so that's no gimme for Miami to win and get into the ACC championship game. Obviously, if they lose, Clemson, who's already seven and one, no um, a- ACC game left. They play against South Carolina, who's also ranked. Um, Clemson would then play SMU. So, um, something else that that was noted, I saw watching kind of the the post game interview of that. Um, it's the tenth straight road win for the Mustangs, so they have proven that they can win on the road. Um, it might be, it actually, it probably will be something that if they win the ACC, they're potentially going to have to do unless unless they slip back ahead of Boise State. They're probably going to have to win on the road. So that could be something that proves to be an advantage. Their their head coach Rhett Lashley has really been cooking there at SMU. He's also interestingly enough something that could be play an interesting storyline in the ACC championship game as he was the Miami offensive coordinator, I believe 2020 and 21 or maybe through 22. He was there for a couple years very recently. It's actually the job he held before going to Dallas to coach the Mustangs. So it's a lot to, to talk about in college football. Um, I'm, I'm interested to see what the rankings are. I might not be able to have a reaction. I'm actually going to be heading back back home this, this week, but um, stay tuned for, for that. I'll also have a video coming up later this week previewing this week's action. And obviously, those of you who know, who have watched the channel, big game for Ohio State, a chance to clinch their spot in the Big Ten Championship with a win over that team up north. But that's all for this episode of College Football Talk. I'm your host, Peter Burtnett. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day. I'm signing out. Peace.